And we begin with White House correspondent Peter Ducey with more on that immigration plan. Nice to see you, Peter. Good morning. Good morning. And a uh, pathway to citizenship gets shorter if Biden gets his way down to eight years from 13 years for 11 million people in this country illegally. And there is a lot to do. Some would say that ours is an ambitious goal, but we do believe with hard work and with the cooperation and collaboration of the members of the United States Congress that we can get it done. The big immigration changes are going to be part of a package that needs congressional approval. But first, something Biden can do on his own, an executive order to reunite families separated and detained at the border. The one policy that was in place during the Obama years for a time that Biden tried to distance himself from Obama during the campaign. Because we made a mistake. It, made too, it took too long to get it right. It took too long to get it right. I'll be president of the United States, not vice president of the United States. And there's also new friction today between the outgoing and incoming administrations. The Trump White House says they want travel restrictions lifted for people coming in from the EU, UK and Brazil starting next week. As the Biden White House says, next week they're in charge. So Jen Psaki tweeted this. On the advice of our medical team, the administration does not intend to lift these restrictions on 126. In fact, we plan to strengthen public health measures around international travel in order to further mitigate the spread of COVID-19. And we expect to see Joe Biden twice today. There's going to be a send-off event in Delaware. And then he's going to come here and speak at a COVID-19 memorial. Then he will overnight in the president's guest house, Blair House. Which is just right behind us here. Um, I mean, it's a traditional place that the president elect stays. Um, what can we expect from inf about information flow from this White House? Um, they're, say they're going to bring back the daily briefings, but beyond that, how often do you think we'll see uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? The transition, we could expect to see him about once a day. The whole communications team and the senior officials are very, very unified. They're very. Uh, cohesive with, okay, this is going to be our one thing that we put out today. This is it. And we're they not going to, not a lot of distractions. Uh, and we do expect to see Jen Psaki every day. Uh, I don't know that we're going to necessarily see the chopper talk from Joe Biden when he's mm -hmm. going places once COVID restrictions are lifted and it's safe for him to travel where he's going over to reporters uh, shouting questions at him. But we could because uh, we have had great luck shouting questions at <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden for the sure last have. two Just years. Shouting. You know, b back in the day, meaning four years ago, um, it was quite common to go two or three days without seeing President Obama. Would, would, is that likely here with a President Biden? I, I think so, definitely. Just because they will pick their spots. They figure out a week ahead, okay, this is going to be our thing this week. Uh, their 100 days plan is very, very organized from what we know. They're saying day one, it's this, day two, it's this, day three, and then day four through six, things are going to fall in. So well, we plans work it. really well until they don't. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> There's that. Thank sort of like you. this show. Uh, great to see you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> right on.